In this video, I'm going to teach you a powerful tool to initiate and help you gain a quick understanding of your fingerboard geography. What is fingerboard geography? Well, geography is maps and locations of places, right? So fingerboard geography maps out our fingerboard so that we know the locations of specific notes so that we know how those notes can relate to certain keys, so that we know what finger patterns should exist on each string, in each key, in each position, and so that we know how to approach scales and arpeggios in every key. Fingerboard geography is a big topic. So where on earth do we begin? That's a lot and it can become overwhelming. I like to start my students with what I call the white notes. So if you think of a piano keyboard, you've got black notes and you've got white notes. And the white notes on a piano keyboard, more or less, can be considered your naturals. And the black keys on your piano can be considered sharps or flats. I know that that's an oversimplification, but it'll do for now. And we don't have the advantage of black notes and white notes. And so we have to learn where the white notes are on our violins. To make matters worse, the beginning finger tapes, those are not the white notes. And we tend to think that that's ground zero, that's the, that's the essence of, of the naturals on, in music, but it's not. Furthermore, it's full of contradictions because if you look at the beginner's finger tapes, you have... Um, if you put your third finger on the tape on the G string, on the tape, it's a C natural. But if you put your second finger on the tape on the A string, it's a C sharp. Same thing with second finger on the E string, that's G sharp. But third finger on the D string is G natural. So it can be really confusing. So the reason these finger tapes exist and the reason that you most likely started with something similar to this, even if you had the, the template that lists all of your notes, most of us start with some kind of a dominant pattern that looks like that. And that's because it's physically the easiest finger pattern to achieve on the violin. That's all. Um, coincidentally, there's a lot of simple songs that work well with this finger pattern. And so it's a win-win. It's easy physically to accomplish this finger pattern. And there's a lot of easier tunes that work well in this finger pattern. But it doesn't mean that you're playing naturals or any specific key at all. It just means you're learning a certain finger pattern at first. So it would be a good exploration for you to name the notes in your beginner finger pattern. But I'm not going to take time to do that. I'm going to teach you the white notes and show you where the naturals are on the violin and you'll see that some of them are on the tapes but many of them are off the tapes and that's important to know which ones are the exceptions so let me just first start by naming the white notes going up from the G string all the way to the E string and then I'll show you a way that you can drill this so that you know it very rapidly you can have this mastered in one week with very little bit of time spent. So we have open G string, okay? Then the first finger is on the tape, that's A natural. Then we have second finger on the tape, that's B natural. And that's what we call a high two because it's a whole step from first finger. That's B natural. Then if we play the third finger on the tape, it's a half step, that's C natural whole step to the fourth finger is D natural. So all of the fingers on the tapes on the G string are natural notes. Okay, then we can play open D and then we can play first finger on the tape, that's E natural. But if we play second finger on the tape on the D string, it's F sharp. And we're going to want to because we just started playing a G major scale, but we're trying to find the white notes. So we need to take that sharp away, move it back a half step. That's F natural. 
then third finger on the tape is G natural. And then fourth finger on the tape is A. So let's just review. You played all the fingers on the tapes on the G string and they were all natural. Which finger on the D string did you, were you not able to play on the tape? Second finger. You, the tape would be F sharp. You had to lower it to make it F natural. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now let's do the A string. A, B on the tape is B natural. High two is gonna be C sharp. So we need to remember low two on the A string is C natural. Third finger on the tape is D natural. Fourth finger on the tape is E natural. So again, second finger was the odd man out. And he had to go from the tape down to low two to be natural. And we have open E. And this is the really weird one. F sharp is on the tape. So E string, we have to play low one below that tape to get F natural. Okay, and to make matters worse, we also can't play second finger on the tape because that would be G sharp. We have to play it right in between the first finger tape and the second finger tape to get G natural. So we had E string, e, F natural, and then low two, G natural. Doesn't feel like a low two because it's a whole step from, from first finger but we still refer to it as low two because it's, it's not up on the tape, it's low. It's just the first finger is lower. <laughs> Third finger on the tape is A natural. Fourth finger on the tape is B natural. Okay, so let's summarize. These two fingers get to be on your beginner tapes on all four strings and they're on white notes. The G string tapes are all white notes. You don't have to go off of the tapes on the G string at all. The D string, everyone but second finger. Second finger had to be low two for F natural. A string, same thing, low two for C natural. E string is the tricky one. We had to go off our tape with our first finger and off our tape with our second finger and the other fingers could be on the tapes. Okay, so recognize that, understand who the outliers are and memorize that. Now, let's look at white notes from the standpoint of what the finger patterns are on each string for the white notes. This is another way of triangulating your memorization of white notes. So the G string has a tetrachord, which is just a four note pattern. It's a scary word that just means four note pattern. A tetrachord of half step between two and three. So that's what your tapes are. Right, see the half step? And then the D string had a tetrachord of a low two tetrachord, half step between one and two. A string, same thing. E string has one finger that changes and it's the first finger had to go even lower. So you have whole steps between every finger on the E string for your white notes. So memorize that, G string, A, E, D. <laughs> G string, D string, A string, E string. Okay, next to help you drill this, go across with finger, with each finger across from each to each string and find out where your finger has to depart from the tapes. Fourth finger, we already know that answer. It's on the tape for white notes. Third finger, on the tape. But let's do our second finger. So on the G string, he gets to be on the tape. That's name your note. B natural. Really good to know the names of your notes. So B natural is high two on the G string. But then second finger has to jump to a low two on the D string. F natural. Go straight across to low two on the A string. Uh, C natural. And straight across to low two on the E string. So it's more common to have a low two on the strings. It's the D string that's the G string. It's the G string that's the different one. Let's do first finger. G string, it's on the tape, A. D string, it's on the tape, D. 
G string, it's on the tape. That's A. D string, it's on the tape. That's E. A string is on the tape. That's B. E string is the outlier. It's low one. And that's F natural. So learn your white notes from finger to finger across the string. Memorize your tetrachords on each string for white notes. Remember what they are? Boom, 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 boom. And that's, and that's it. Uh, you could also play your white notes ascending with your bow. Here, I'll play it. Um, like a scale, but don't get sucked into playing a scale. You're not playing a scale, you're playing your white notes. <laughs> Even without repeating, so play fourth finger and no open strings, that's even more challenging. And of course, do not de don't neglect going down. You might even start from the top and descend. physically harder than ascending. So it's important that you really drill the descending. So learning the white notes, learning the tetrachords, going finger to finger across all the strings and playing it, ascending and descending, way less than one week of work. And then you will have a working knowledge of where all the naturals are, and that will make the tapes on your violin or your little note template It'll make it make so much more sense. You'll know what people mean when they say high three <laughs> or low two or low one. It just gives you more of a perspective for navigating the musical world. Once you have that all learned in about a week or so, then you can take it to a higher level if you want to by using the Galamian scale concept. And that is by, so we play all four fingers on all four strings in the key of all white notes. So that's the key of C or A minor. Those two keys both have no sharps, no flats. They're all white notes. But then you stay in the first position and decide, I'm going to add F sharp and nothing else. Everything else is white, but I'm going to add an F sharp. So you have to know when where the Fs are on your violin and raise those notes ascending and descending. Then you might add another sharp. Say I'm going to add F sharp and C sharp. Um, you can do anything you want, but I recommend adding the sharps and keeping them there because that's how key signatures work. You don't just have a C sharp alone without F sharp too. So just keep adding additional sharps. Look on your circle of fifths and it'll tell you which sharp to add next. So, and then do flats. Erase all those sharps, go back to white notes, and then say, I'm going to play all of my white notes except Bs. I'm going to make my Bs flat. Let me show you B flat. So we start with G, A, B flat, D, E, F natural, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F, G, A, B flat. How many B's did you, did you hit? There were three. And do that for each key as far as you dare. You can go all the way around the circle of fifths if you're really brave, but if you just want a basic working knowledge, go up to three flats and three sharps using this Galamian scale concept. Then if you are more advanced and you want to challenge yourself even further and if you want to improve your knowledge of positions. Move your hand into third position, A any position you want. I'm going to use third position as an example. And first finger will be your, your starting note. Play all four fingers on all four strings, 
Find your white notes in third position. Do the same thing. Learn them across the string. Learn them ascending. Learn them descending. And know the names of those notes and know what the tetrachord is on each string. Or maybe I should clarify that. Notice what the tetrachord is because it gets a little bit overwhelming to say, oh my gosh, I have to memorize the tetrachord on every string for every position for every key. No, you don't, but it helps for you to notice because that brings to your conscious mind what's happening and it helps you to retain it better. But knowing the names of the notes is hugely helpful. So let me just show you third position, all white notes. And you can choose to take it beyond that if you so desire. So first position is C. That's convenient. It's going to sound like a C major scale. That's too easy. That's okay. We could use a little easiness. C, D, E, F natural. So far we had that tetrachord. And then G, E, A, sorry, B natural. And C natural, same tetrachord again. And then D on the A string, E, F natural, half step, G, A, B, C, D. So the E string and the A string had that tetrachord. The D string and the G string had that tetrachord. Then from there, you could add an F sharp and Find where those F sharps are and raise those notes by a half step. It's just taking, playing around with this um, concept is the fastest way to really boost your fingerboard geography. I highly recommend it and I hope that this video was helpful to you. And I want to make everybody aware that I now have a Patreon account. You can find the link in the video description box below and you can join me there on Patreon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.